We have a life program at College Avenue. It was created some time ago by the minister there and uh, a local auto repair establishment, Car X. Every time someone goes in and gets their car worked on and they agree to give a donation of food to the church, they get 15% off. Now the church has a different position as far as distributing these foods. Although we have, since the program began, given away 57 tons worth of food. It's our position that the Bible says, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially them that are of the household of faith. That, especially to this preacher, means members of the church come first. So, this preacher is not responsible for looking for people who need, and I ask people of the church to be responsible for making sure they fill the needs that they see within their fields. Members of the church have free access to that pantry anytime they want to get in it. And they can take whatever they want to take out of it and distribute it among people as they see that have need. As far as the preacher is concerned, he's not involved in that. We let the members serve the tables and we'll continually give ourselves to the word. Amen. 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 That's, that's, that's why this kind of thing is, 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 is powerful, right? Because we get to hear and, and, and follow these things. I do have a, a, a question here someone wanted would ask. Because we're, uh, as we watch you guys, these guys are all successful. Amen? Amen. Yes. And say amen when you can. Now. Amen. To some folks, success is a dog. To some folks, success is seven cars they can't drive, you know, but... Some folks success as a pickup truck, and, you know, so whatever level you may equate success with, but we consider you spiritually successful, especially as men of God. Amen. That preach to you, pray with you, help. Y'all say amen. 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 So the question is, and this doesn't have to be seen as an arrogant question, it's a ser serious question. Uh, to what do you contribute your success in ministry? To what do you contribute uh, your success in ministry? Uh, and anyone of you can stab at that. It doesn't have to be something that becomes, as uh, Brother Dinkins would say, self-aggrandizing. But just, what do you contribute to your success in ministry? Uh, four words for me. The grace of God. Amen. 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 Appreciate that. Amen. Uh, anybody like to add to that or just all concur and we move to the next question? I concur. Or add to it then, preacher? I, I would be dismissed not to uh, acknowledge my wife at this point. Um, if it wasn't for my wife, uh, who's my greatest supporter yeah. and cheerleader, uh, she gives me encouragement when I'm down. Yeah. Uh, she gives me, um, uh, she lets me see the things that I don't see. She, she's my counselor. Uh, she's my uh, soulmate, and so uh, my ministry, uh, even me being a Christian, I wouldn't even be a Christian if it wasn't for my wife. I even, right. you know, my wife, she won me over to the Lord. Right. You know, I was a Baptist. My granddaddy was a Baptist preacher, you know, so I, I, I owe it to my wife and her family who were committed to the Church of Christ and mm -hmm. and di died in the Church of Christ uh -huh. and, and 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 I was certainly blessed to marry into a wonderful family. Amen. 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 You add about seven more months, eight more months on to your marriage. Right? Twenty more years on when you say stuff like that. <laughs> Anybody else like to take a stab at that? Um, what do you What do you contribute to your success in ministry? 
Um, the question here, uh, because you talked about the challenges, and and as uh, Brother Hubbard made a statement too, this is this is also for uh, a learning from each other, a learning with each other, but also helping the churches as a whole. So here I'm, I'm going to ask each one of you. Nobody gets to, to not answer this one. So we'll start in whatever order. What would be your advice to someone who is beginning in his or her ministry, whether it's preaching, homeless ministry, abuse, addiction, fixing, whatever it is, whatever ministry they want to engage in, what would be your advice to someone who is beginning in his or her ministry? Um, my advice would be to have a passion for the ministry that they're entering into. Amen. Uh, I, I, and also that there be a need for the ministry. Sometimes we will look at another congregation and see what ministry they're engaged in and say, hey, we should be doing that too. But that's not a ministry that will work at our local, at our congregation. So it, you must be passionate about what you're doing. And I think even from a leadership standpoint, we shouldn't be trying to force people into a ministry we think we need. We need to have people in ministries that they have a passion for. And I think that goes back even to the previous question, I think, for me, as far as the success in the ministry, is, is the membership itself. Um, the members contribute to the success. If it was not for the membership, there's no way I could be successful in my ministry. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah, they, 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 everybody got to answer those. We, we, we're trying to help somebody who's thinking about engaging in ministry. Because a lot of times they see you guys and, you know, all you're well-dressed and, you, you know, you're up here and you're in front of people. But th there's a lot behind the scene that people don't know and don't see or not engaged in it. So, so I like what Brother Easton said, make sure they have a passion and then also make sure there's a need for that ministry. Yep. Yep. So let's, let's, let's try to help somebody. I'd say Romans chapter 12, verse number 11, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, which suggests the idea, number one, that if you're going to do it, do it like you want to do it. Don't be dragging around late and act like you're not serious. If you're going to do it, put all your best into the activity of it. Amen. Have the attitude that shows you're interested in it, and then do it to the best of your ability. I think those two core pieces that a person has to do, and everybody may not understand what you're trying to do. They may not see the gift that God has given you. may not stand behind that. But if you understand God has given you a gift to do something, then do your best, put all you have into it, and let God guide you. Amen. 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 Well, I tell you, it's a hard act to follow, <laughs> based upon what we've heard. I'd like to visit the same neighborhood, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. I think... And he goes on to say, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. This particular conference is talking about transforming people from the inside out. And I think these are some of the qualities and characteristics that must be present in any ministry that one does. Passion, absolutely. Zeal, certainly. But don't forget to pray without ceasing. Because what prayer does is it elevates. And what scriptural education does is it spiritually elevates. And what it does, God will make up. You notice in geometry you have acute and obtuse angles. Now you might have an acute angle, but if you have, you're trying to produce a straight line. But if you just have an acute and not an obtuse, you're not all the way there. Oh. Normally, we are acute. We are less than 90 degrees. We need God to supplement what we don't have in order that we might be successful in what we are trying to do. So prayer fills the bill. Passion, prayer, persistence. We'll do a job. <laughs> I would concur with everything that has been said thus far. However, I'd like to take you to Romans 2, only chapter 10, verse 1 through 4, I believe it is. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. 
I'd like to persuade you, if you're really serious and on winning people out of darkness into God's marvelous light, that you learn all you can and can all you get. And remember, David said in Psalms 84, 11, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Amen. I think one of the <clears throat> tragedies of the 21st century church, uh, from my limited post of observation, is our lack of appreciation for God's anointing. For some reason, we shy away from the mere word anointing. For what reason? It's a biblical word. It's not a Baptist word. It's not a Church of God in Christ word. It's in First John, it talks about the anointing. Yes, sir. And all that is is a five dollar word that means giftedness. Yeah. God gives every member of the body of Christ a spiritual gift. Yes, sir. And we spend, if we would spend out more time in discovering what our gift is yes. rather than getting in each other's business, yes. we would be a better church yes. from my limited post of observation. God gives us a shape, a shape. And shape is an acronym uh, for S, a spiritual gift. You can rest assured if you're a baptized believer, you have a spiritual gift. You also, through life, develop habits. Some good, some bad. But God can take your bad habits and funnel them into his cause and for his Christ and make them good habits. And he also looks and gives all of us a ability. You have an ability that nobody can do exactly what needs to be done like you do it. Because God also gives you a personality with your ability. And then we all have unique and varying experiences. So through the SHAPE acronym, God gives us a spiritual gift. And I think that we need to take time uh, to discover what our gift is. And the other thing that I want to say, very briefly. You got to say, and another thing. <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> the other area is that everybody, just because you're a male, and can read, All right. and can quote a few scriptures, All right. doesn't mean that you are gifted to be a minister of the gospel of Christ. <laughs> our church is the only one that does not define a specific way of, 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 of coming up to uh, what kind of training is needed. What, what, you know, just because you can read doesn't mean that you, that God wants every male to be a preacher. You know, Paul settled that argument. You know, we can't all be one part of the body. And I think what we need to do is once we are confident that we are anointed in a specific area, the passion will come because that's who you are. That's what you do. Yes, you know, so you don't have to pray for passion. Yes. You know, the passion is already innately in the gift that God has already given you. Yes. Because, as a matter of fact, it's, it's, it's more like fun rather than work. You know, some people like to go and talk to people. That's why it's not it's not difficult for them to approach people. They're people persons. They they're able to talk uh, uh, share easily because that's their gift. That's right. So they have a passion for doing that. Yes. That's all. Right. Right yeah. I hope y'all are taking notes. Y'all taking notes? That's what this kind of thing is for. Now, I got my shape. I hope y'all got y'all shape. I wrote mine down. I hope people. Thank you, preacher. Yes, I did. <laughs> For me, um, my prayer was to ask God that he would use me 
as a vessel to help see somebody's life change like he changed my life. And especially where I came from with my um, past addiction to drugs and alcohol. God delivered me. Amen. And I know there's countless of others out there that need to know AA is okay. NA is all right. But the word of God, that'll get you there. So I think with, uh, with that purpose in mind that uh, you are driven by the obedience of God, uh, in any ministry passion is, is certainly uh, a part of that. But to have that desire and zeal and knowledge of who God is and what he can do and he will do and to pass it on to someone who is in desperate need of deliverance. Amen. Oscar A will be our last.